with my fall garden prep, I thought we would discuss one of the concepts in my garden manifesto, and that is my theory of garden relativity. And every one thing in the garden relates to every other thing. And there is a perfect example of that that is kind of a combo of what we did yesterday. And Stuart and I apologize for getting that video up so late. We were having technical issues. So go back and watch it today if you, if you haven't. And I was talking about putting and planting this hanging basket, using it as a pedestal planter and filling it with cuttings of coleus and basil. And obviously it is still getting established. And today's the perfect day to do that because we're actually getting a little bit of rain. At this point, it is just mist and drizzle, but I am hoping it will pick up and we'll actually get enough to make a difference other than just making our cars dirty. <laughs> so, but this is a perfect kind of day if you wanted to be working out in the garden. Uh, it's the perfect kind of day to do that because things like to be transplanted in this weather, whether they're cuttings, whether you're moving a plant from one location to another or you're planting it for the first time. So this will also give you a little glimmer into how my weird mind works. <laughs> so, so yesterday I talked about using a hanging basket as a saucer shaped planter and putting it on a wire stand or a metal a metal plant stand and hopefully over time as i add more seasonal color this will be so profuse that you won't see the liner especially after i zhuzh it and you won't even be able to see the top of the plant stand it will be that full so i did this and originally i placed it over there but then this morning as so often happens disaster struck but along with disaster came an aha moment. So I came out here this morning and this pot, which forever had been delicately placed on this metal stand that I got at Goodwill years ago. So this pot had been positioned on this stand and for whatever reasons, it had been there for forever. Maybe it got knocked over by a squirrel. <laughs> I don't had know what happened. But I came out this morning and the, everything had toppled over. And you can see the remnants of the disaster here. And I still have to pop these up again and get them growing according to plan. But then when I saw that plant stand and it was empty, I thought, well, why can't I do my papa bear, mama bear, baby bear container planting because I had enough of these wrought iron metal hanging baskets to do that. And I even had some leftover burlap. So I thought, okay, I'll just set one of my extra hanging baskets in here. And then I had a smaller one to represent the baby bear contingent that I can put on this plant stand. Now I hear you saying, oh my gosh, but the finishes don't all match. <laughs> so this is my question of the day. Would that bother you as much as it bothers me that the finishes on these are all different? but that can easily be remedied with a coat of spray paint. And then I will have a perfect family for fall of papa bear, mama bear, and baby bear. And once they're planted and once they're full and cascading and lush, then I can reposition them accordingly. But I kind of like them right, right here in this area, which is a focal point when you walk in that back gate. This is the first thing you see. And then this pot of very now sad geraniums will be relocated to another area where the other geraniums are to go live with their family. So <laughs> this is what I'm, I'm doing here. And in my, my thinking of always stealing from Peter to pay Paul, I had in my plant hospital in the back, I had a couple of kind of sad New Guinea impatiens that weren't doing very well. And I pulled those out and they may very well show up in one of these containers, I'm not sure. And I also have, let me go get it, Stuart. Somebody commented yesterday when I left, they said, she left you, Stuart. <laughs> I'll 
try to plan ahead for stuff to hum here. But since I've been potting up coleus cuttings all summer long, I will still have some more to put in these hanging baskets. I could also, this hookerella, this is a southern living hookerella, and it's been hot, but it's starting to recover. I could also add these to these containers along with whatever my color pop of choice is. So I will be, after I have repainted these so that they all harmonize, they all match, and they all look as if they are members of the same family, a la Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear, then I will be happy. Now you could do this with, with pots, you know, a lot of times I'll use container plantings as Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear, and you could have multiple Baby Bears. But I think once these fill out and are all planted up, I think it will be just exquisite, don't you? Mm -hmm. I think it'll be the bee's knees. <laughs> so, or, or will it tickle you pink, Stuart? I wonder if that's the first time I've ever heard you say bee's knees. Bee's knees, will it tickle you pink? It will tickle me pink, Stuart. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so, so this is my vision. Can you guys see my vision? I hope you can, because this is going to be my fallscape extravaganza for the backyard. But it, right now, just needs to to adapt and enjoy these kind of moist conditions we've had today. And Stuart, if you don't mind, would you just kind of do a, just a little circuit and see how pretty my garden looks when it does rain and when there's oh, a little bit beautiful. of a drizzle, drizzle, even when things are kind of brown? Yeah, it is it'll... beginning to feel fallish out, isn't it? Yeah, well, the shade and the water make it look amazing. Definitely. So here are some other things that I've got on my, on my fall garden to-do list. Let me show you one other thing. We actually did a short on this, but in case you missed the short, I wanna show it to you again. Somebody had asked me if I would give an update on my Cheryl Laurel topiaries, and these have been in the house, and they were actually doing fine in the house. When I brought them back outside, it was a little bit traumatic for them, and they dropped a number of leaves. This one, in fact, I thought it was dead, but then I just cut it back and I'll be darned if look, it just didn't flush out in new growth. And then all of this has all sorts of new leafy growth. And these were just, I think there were cherry laurels that I dug up from the front yard and they're very happy and I'll continue to pinch them and they'll be beautiful. And there's also kind of a, a papa bear, mama bear, baby bear thing going. So whomever that was that kept asking me to do an update, I apologize that I've just now gotten to it. Um, and then here is something else as a heads up that you might want to do. It's starting to rain a little bit harder, Stuart. It's nice. So this may not be a long one. Um, <laughs> it is time, if you haven't already done so, and I meant to move these in before it started raining today, but I have quit watering all of these amaryllis bulbs that I had growing in this huge planter. And actually these were in this planter here. And because I wanna use this planter for something else, I took them out. I will bring these in. I won't water them anymore. I will let the foliage go ahead and die down. And I won't pop them up again until as it gets closer to Christmas. These I'll just leave in the pot. And then as I have mentioned before, amaryllis kind of just have a mind of their own and they bloom when they wanna bloom. <laughs> so I am happy for their gift whenever they choose to do that. But in this pot, since I took out those amaryllis, I now have all sorts of cuttings of another element that I've got in my garden, and that is dragon wing begonias. So I'm gonna fill this completely with dragon wing begonias. And then I've got this one here that has nothing but this golden leaf coleus. These were cuttings I started a while ago. They have already taken root and are very happy and established in here. These will continue to grow. And then both of these elements already exist at other places throughout the landscape. They will get full. They'll be happy in the milder temperatures that we're finally receiving and hopefully a little bit of rain. So this area in the bistro will 
I, it will be choreographed and, and set a little bit different differently. And then I hope in, in the near future, we I'll have a whole dining segment where we're dining outside because I have so many icicle eggplants from the potage. It's been, they've been so productive that I promised Stuart I would make some eggplant parmesan. Mm -hmm. And I will do that, but on a day where we can dine outside because right now it's just a little bit wet and I am not complaining. The other thing that loves these, look at how much these have grown, Stuart. Oh, wow. And these are just those Blue Point junipers that came up, that I dug up, and I have identified more in the front yard that I might, I might add to my my little juniper forest. Oh, wow, those especially over there. I know, these have really grown, and they are loving this weather. So that's fun. And I also identified another little top dresser. I think I showed you the miniature little pine cones I had to mulch these in the winter. I've now identified something else, and I'll show that to you a little bit later. In here, I am waiting for hopefully a pretty good soak and the soil to be softer so that I can take advantage of the opportunity at points of transition before a rain, after a rain. That gives us an opportunity and a window of time to do something. And for me, it will be installing this brick that I showed you yesterday, but the ground is very hard right now. I'll wait till hopefully we get enough rain for that to happen. And then here is one of my beloved Terra hydrangeas. I already cut off all of the blooms, but you can see where I cut them off, how much new foliage is coming, coming back. These are the Terra oak leaf hydrangeas. And I've got one back here that is kind of crammed into the corner. And I think to get some symmetry, I'm going to transplant that over in this Ooh. area somewhere where it will get more light and it will perform better. And then I've got some obsession, Nan a few more obsession Nandina that I ordered because they're just tough as nails. And I will fill in pockets where I am trying to hide cables or things like that. And today we have our YouTube live at two o'clock. We're going to be giving away a Costway metal arbor. I think this may be arbor. Going after the live, probably. And then, and I'm sorry. So they will have already seen the live by the time. Oh, you will have already see seen this. the live. Yeah. That's okay. So, so thanks congratulations, for coming to the live. <laughs> congratulations to whomever won. That was uh, yes, and if you have trouble signing up as a member please just email us at support at lindavotter.com. I know sometimes you go to a main site and you get in a loop and it can be frustrating. That's actually their site's problem, not ours, but just please send us Yeah, a we can support. try to help you get through it. Yeah, yeah. support at, at, at lindavotter.com. Another thing is uh, if you want the wallpapers, then those are something that Stuart has put together, but they have to be downloaded. So we're happy to provide them to you, but you have to let us know you want them. Someone in the comments said they didn't get any wallpapers, they didn't get any, well, you have to actually request those. So again, support at lindavotter.com. Just anything you need to know, send it to support at lindavotter.com and we will try to answer those questions for you. If you, have que if you have concerns about squirrels, I cannot help you. But if, hopefully other things we can. So this is what I envision for this area. You can see that those angel wing begonias are starting to come out. Now the temperatures have moderated. And I envision this entire area. Hold on, I'm showing them this window box. Okay. You can see that the hosta a lot of you ask, do, do I ever grow hosta? Only in this window box now. And even these got rather crispy because if it gets up to 115, anything has the right to turn crispy. Look at how pretty that hookerella on the corner looks. That textural quality between the hookerella and that fern and the baby gem boxwood. That's all very pretty. And this side needs to catch up and it probably will now that it gets a little bit more light. I've got a little bit of, of fluffing to do on the window box. I also kind of want to point out that I, I am a little bit, a little bit self-satisfied because I have reduced to a great extent a lot of, of what I think was the clutter. Now I've, I've got some more zhuzhing to do and garden equipment notwithstanding, 
that I can move out of the way. Stuart, does it look a little less busy to you? It looks, like I said, I walked in this morning and, and kind of had I a thought it looked moment. great. Yeah. My, next, my next project to tackle is going to be the potager in the back because we took down the tarp. Can I also just say, I have had, look at all the cardinals back in there, Stuart. I have had so many cardinals and they oh, love that viburnum. And if og &E ever comes oh, in and tries to fly. take down that viburnum. Oh my goodness, call me. I, yeah, I'll, come over I'll have Stuart beat, beat them up. Though I don't, though I, <laughs> though I, I am not promoting violence no, in not. any, in any, I shouldn't how, have even said that. You this. can't, I know. That's how much I can't we even love say that. Can I, but, but look over there on the yep. top of that fence that is uneven. Yep. Well, we're going to figure out something to do about that. But uh, the protege will be very happy after I give it some attention and show it some love and show like it this angle yeah show it some pruning it will be fine and and then so many of you have kindly kindly notified me about the potage being in on the 100th anniversary of better homes and gardens their oh, 100th I, anniversary issue i haven't I even gotten say, it yeah yet. i meant to say something about that I, I need to pick up a couple of copies and you guys have been so sweet to congratulate me i guess now a friend of mine said, I am now formally a garden trend. <laughs> so, okay, that, that, that is good to know. So I've got all of that that I am working on. Something else that you guys have been asking me to do for a while, albeit a very modest thing, but you guys have wanted me to do it for a while, and I finally did, even though I've got some more zhuzhing to do, is I moved this garden bench out a little bit further and I will put new gravel down in here and kind of clean this area up a little bit clean out the dead and just kind of refresh this area for fall somebody asked me if I ever grew any kind of hollies and yes I've showed this before it needs some trimming on it and it too is a little bit sunburned but that's a Chinese Burford holly that I formed into a topiary that just came up on its own. So again, that's my argument. That's my, my making the case that gardening, if you have enough time and patience, um, it doesn't have to be too expensive. Lastly, I wanna show you one other thing because I think it can be a little confusing and it was to me at first of, of how it is that I do my gravel and I, I think I told you that I had somebody come in and help me because a lot, that much gravel is very heavy. So I had somebody come in and they just kind of dumped it and spread it around in the foreground. But I don't, I don't mulch with gravel all the way to the back. I leave it pretty much just at the front. And then what I do is I once they get it in place for me, this isn't a very good example, but once they get it in place for me, I then take my little rake. I'm trying to follow her, y'all. I know, and it's because <laughs> I've already done a lot of this, but where it's too heavy in the front, then I take it and I just rake it towards the back where it slowly begins to fade out. And normally, when the garden is completely full and I haven't pulled a lot of things out and dead, normally it's so full in the back that then the transition zone between the gravel and the dirt is obscured by things that are growing. Does that make sense, Stuart? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I have it in the foreground and in between my bricks and stone, but then the depth of it slowly fades out as it gets to the back. And most of the time you can't even, you can't even distinguish that at all. I or, would have never, is that how it's always been? Pretty much. All right, then I would have, I never knew. Never knew. I've looked at it a couple times. Okay, the other thing is <laughs> when I first put down a new batch of pea gravel and I get this at Lowe's or I buy it in bulk from Minic Materials, when I first put it down, this here is new gravel, you can see that. 
When you first put it down, don't be upset if it looks like maybe it's a different color than the gravel you had originally. And that's because it's just chalky and it has all sorts of... So it would look different even if it wasn't white. Yes, it has okay. all sorts of filings and chalkiness on it because it hasn't aged in place for a while. It hasn't been rained on. It's been in a bag on a on a pallet. And so it needs to be in place for a while before it will kind of transition to the color of the original gravel. And, and it's just like a, a fence, a new section of fence has to age a little bit. This will age in place. Also, as it begins to intermingle with soil and, you know, soil that gets knocked over, <laughs> in pots and that kind of thing. And that eventually makes it look natural. But Stuart, if you kind of just do this slow pan again, just around the perimeter, you can kind of see that it looks as if the whole area is gravel, but not really. And then, and then I said lastly before, but this will be my real lastly. <laughs> We'll see about that. Right? I lied. Some of you have asked, do I really use miracle Grow?" And yes, I, yes, I do. I, I am, I would say 90% organic, but I am not an abs, an absolute absolutist. So I do use miracle Grow because it's just easier for my container plantings. It's not in the ground. It might leave residual salts and things on the containers, like on my terracotta, but I don't mind that. I kind of like that. And, um, and it's just easier. And, it's, and it, for me, it's a little bit less expensive and I don't have to do any measuring. So, so yes, I do, but that's also just because it's easier. Anything in ground gets fertilized with an organic fertilizer, whether it is water-based, a liquid, organic or a granular organic. And then I'll just depart and say goodbye looking at this gor gorgeous orange rocket barberry look, Stuart. Oh, it's starting to, Why did I think Lagustrum for half a second? That's sunshine Lagustrum. But this is starting to do, starting to do its thang. Yeah, it's cool. And look at how beautiful that is. Well, Stuart, the rain is picking up. We need to go in. All right, well. Again, we had Thank a great time at the live today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I, I assume we did. We did. So we're going to go in and get dry so that, um, so that we're not completely soaked. Maybe it seems like a hot tea kind of day, Stuart. Hey, there you go. Maybe some hot tea. So there you go. And we will see you either before or after on live. Well, sometimes you wear a hat to protect you yourself from the sun, but sometimes you wear it to kind of, as kind of a, an umbrella on your head. And that's what this hat is doing for me today. It's from San Diego Hat Company. I bought it in Santa Fe. I love it. And we've got a gentle mist right now, so it's just perfect for that kind of thing. My top is one of my favorite new things. And by the way, on Tuesday, I think we're gonna do a Try It Out Tuesday that's just nothing. These aren't sponsored. We're not getting paid for them, but just some of my very favorite pro products that I have discovered recently. And Stuart, are you game for that? I am. And I'll just show you some products. One of them, which Stuart just commented on in my kitchen. Uh, so anyhow, this top is one of my favorite new things. I just bought it off of Amazon. I love it. It's so comfortable. Uh, size up if you, you get it, and we'll try to put a link in. Uh, my belt is from Nordstrom Rack. My britches I bought online. My shoes, I, I think I also bought these from Amazon. I'm not sure, but they're kind of waterproof, so that's good. And my earrings I got as a gift, so I'm not sure what their provenance is. But there you go. Stuart, is, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Okay, there's your outfit of the day. <laughs>